hey y'all welcome back to the channel happy new year happy 2020 as you can see we got a little mukbang going here so i brought in the new year with my family and we having a seafood boil i also have um what's that what's her name b-love smacklicious sauce right here well, let's get into it so as you can see from the title we're talking about that i grew up in a cult okay <laughs> about how i grew up in a cult an african hebrew cult it was called the african hebrew israelites and yes um i don't know like where should i start so how i grew up in that cult my mother first of all i grew up strict pentecostal so at first i was a pentecostal like christian strict christian and i grew up that way and then around like age 15 my mother decided to change our religion and we decided and she found the african hebrew israelites and we decided to be a part of the african or she decided that we would be a part of the african hebrew hebrew israelites okay and if you're not familiar with the african hebrew israelites they are they're the cult that is ran by Ben Ami, and he's passed. I think he's been deceased for maybe like five years now. But yeah, he's no longer here. He was the group leader. He was the cult leader, and basically, it was definitely a cult. Like, what happened was, is this guy had a vision. Ben Ami had a vision that. He was the Messiah, and he was about to save all the black diaspora, the black people, and move everybody to Israel, okay? I'm talking about the state of Israel, the Middle East. And that's exactly what he did. He started his own religion based on the, um, I forgot if it was the Old or the New Testament. It was, I can't remember. Because um, I really wasn't paying attention. When I was 15, I was just doing it because my mom was doing it. So whatever my mama was doing, that's what I was doing. But yeah, like he moved all these people to Israel and they was all in Israel pretty much living there. They like, started a whole new life. They first started in Benin. Then they moved from Benin to and migrated all the way to Israel where they just was living their own life. That's the clue. The, the cucumber, you y'all gotta put the cucumber because my mouth is on fire. Hey, bring me some water. Bring me some to drink, please. And so, yeah. He moved these people to Israel. And they were just over there living their own life. They was over there. Thank you. Over there practicing polyg polygamy. So a lot of them had like th multiple wives. They had multiple wives. They had a whole lot of children because you know all of their wives was pregnant. So they had a whole lot of children and it was just like a mess. Like these men couldn't even take care of themselves. But they had the nerves to have all these women and then they were all just living in poverty. And it was just like how do you get all these wives and y'all still broke? It was just crazy and it was like just like I don't know like a power struggle with these people because they were concerned about a lot of people who joined the cult I, I realized were people who people who were like loners or people who was just lame like they didn't have any friends they probably was super lame in high school they or their family just um Their family wasn't close together. They were estranged from their family, so their family really didn't care if they picked up and relocated all the way to Israel and never came back. Or just people who were defiant, people that wanted to just leave their family and pick up and move to another country and not move back. So yeah, so I joined that 
and not only did they practice polygamous, they also practiced a vegan diet. So, and it was a strict vegan diet, which um, they were also trying to push to have everybody. <laughs> they were trying to push to have everyone become raw vegans. So they were really trying to push the agenda, okay? And they have different locations. Like like most cults, they have different locations in different cities all around the world. And when people ask me how was I able to travel so much, I was able to travel because I was in that cult and I would go visit different places to visit different sects in the cult. Every time you do that, you move the camera. Yeah, so I will go visit different places so that I can visit different um, countries and stuff. But I was still... I would still be living with the people that's in the cult. So, yeah, they practice a vegan diet. They practice food making me. They had sex, sex, like groups of people with them all over the world and they also own businesses and I'm gonna tell you a little story about that like my mom ended up leaving the cult when I think maybe when I was 18 but I ended up staying because at that time they were more of a family to me and the I had grew up with some of the people so we had become friends and we were like family so I ended up staying and when I stayed, why did you leave? I ended up staying after my mom left. I'm not even sure why my mom left, but my mom ended up leaving the cult. And when she, when she left, I ended up staying. So I stayed, and when I stayed, I need I need a crab opener or crab cutter or whatever. So yeah, anyways, I stayed. And when I stayed, I was a part of the Cleveland, the Cleveland set. And I stayed in Cleveland for maybe like, I think it maybe until I was like maybe 19. And then after that, I decided I wanted to move to Atlanta cult because I really did not like the weather in Cleveland. And I decided I wanted to move somewhere where the weather was like much warmer. I like warm weather. So I moved to Atlanta. I moved to the Atlanta call. Well, the Atlanta section. And. Oh, <coughs> that sauce is spicy. Oh, my God. It went down the wrong way, I swear. Okay, y'all. And the Atlanta. The Atlanta. Um group i'll call it a group was different from the cleveland group because in the cleveland group they were much more relaxed like you could wear the clothes that you wanted to wear but in atlanta they were very strict they were like oh it's like israel here it's like the motherland here you can't wear whatever you want to wear you got to wear the african garb like you had to wear these african clothes every day you can't wear street clothes or they call them jake clothes jake you couldn't wear jake clothes but like, no. The corn is in my teeth. So, yeah, you couldn't wear just whatever clothes they wanted you to wear. But in Cleveland, they weren't really tripping. It wasn't a big deal. So, I didn't really have that many of those African clothes because I didn't wear them like that. And another reason I didn't have that many like that is because I was only a part of the group for the benefits that it provided me. I was not a part of the group. I was not like a hardcore brainwash type of person that was a part of the group that would do anything for Ben Ami or um, one of those people that was going to work for free for all of my life or let them whoop me because they was actually whooping people. But um, like adults, adults was getting whoopings. So um, I moved to Atlanta and when I moved to Atlanta, 
it was different. It was much different. I moved into one of the houses. They call it, they call the houses a nation house. And the nation house is because it belongs to the cult. They own it, but they rent out rooms to the people that join the cult. So I was in the nation house and I was living there. And since I moved there, they I guess they figured I didn't have a job, but I had transferred my job. I was at the time I was like 19, I was working at Chipotle. And Chipotle was like, yeah, we'll transfer your job. So I was like, okay, cool. So they said, you have 90 days to report and get transferred in, find a location and get transferred in. So the first 30 days that I moved there, the cult had me working in their daycare. They have a daycare called Genesis or something. It's in the West End, in Atlanta, in the West End. So is that too much information? <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, so I worked at their daycare, and in their daycare, um, I was working there from, like, sunup to sundown. Like, daycares are open from, like, 6.30 to 6.30. I was working there from 6.30 to 6.30 for a whole month. Do you know, at the end of the month, they gave me a paycheck, and the paycheck was, like, they paid me in cash, and the cash was, like, 200 it was less than two hundred dollars. I was like, "What is this? Where's my money? Y'all are playing with me. Where's my money, ma'am? Ma'am, where's my money, sir? Where's my money? Run me my so, money." Like Y'all, I ran out of storage, but I'm back. But wow. yeah, so I got my paycheck, or what they thought was a paycheck, and it was like. Where's the rest of my money? So I asked them, they was like, oh, you know what? You gotta pay for housing. You gotta pay for food. They never even fed me. I'm like, food? Housing, I share a room with somebody. How much does this room cost that I'm sharing with somebody and that I'm also living with like six other people? Then they was like, nation dues. So you gotta pay to be a part of the cult or whatever. They was like, yeah, we gotta take care of Ben Ami, the cult leader or the cult founder or the messiah is what he called himself like that's some real narcissistic stuff like the messiah like <laughs> you tried it but yeah like they was like you got to pay for that i was like no i said like, okay y'all got it you got it this time so i didn't show up to work for like the next two weeks they was like where are you what are you doing why aren't you showing up for work y'all want to know what i did I went right on to Chipotle and got my job. I was like, hi, I'm here. I transferred from Cleveland and I started working at Chipotle. And I had been working at Chipotle and they were like, oh, you know, they came and confronted me. It was like, what are you doing? Did anybody tell you that you can go get a job outside of the nation? And does that place sell meat? Because if they sell meat, you can't work somewhere that sells meat. And I was just like, I don't care what they selling long as they paying me for the hours that I work at the end of the day, okay? So long story short, they were like, okay, you can work there, but you still gotta work for us. And the crazy thing about it is like, it's people that's really brainwashed, that's in that nation, that's working there, wasting years of their life, working for them for free, or I guess not for free, working for them so that they can live inside of this house and they just broke. Like, these people, they be complaining that they don't have anything to eat. You know, they're not getting fed or anything. Like, they're just being used by these people. And it's just crazy. Like, why are you following these rules and living this lifestyle? And with the hopes and promises of having an everlasting life. This man is dead and gone. Like, I wonder how they feel now that the leader is gone when he said that he was going to live forever because he eats a raw vegan diet and now he's dead and gone. So that was pretty much like, that was like the crazy story that I had. And then on top of that, I told them I wasn't coming in to volunteer either because that's just not what I'm doing. I'm not coming in to volunteer because I'm tired because I went to work all day. So I'm not coming in to volunteer. And the sister was like the leader sister of that group. Because it's like a, a brother leader and a, a sister leader. She asked me, did I, did I want a whooping? And I was like, excuse me? 
Excuse me, what? Did you just say do we want to fight? Cause I'm it ain't gonna be a whooping, it's gonna be a fight. But yeah, she asked me did I want to whoop it? and I was like, girl bye. Like, you too old, so you ain't even got it. Talking about I used to be in the military, okay. And I'm a fresh 19. We can get into it. You wanna get into it? Cause we can. But yeah. It was just crazy, like, and then I think one time I was getting ready to go to Israel, and I was leaving from Atlanta, and they were trying to put stuff in my luggage, like, they took, they was like, you gotta bring your luggage down to the, um, the nation hall, because they own the hall, you gotta bring your luggage down here so we could check your luggage before you get on the flight, because we gotta see what you bring into the land, and I was like, I'm not bringing my luggage because I'm grown, like, you're not about to check my luggage. And they told me I wasn't grown. That I was not grown until they told me I was grown. So, um, needless to say, I did not bring my luggage. Because they were trying to put stuff in my luggage. And I kept, I was like, why do y'all want me to bring my luggage? They were like, oh, we got to put some stuff in it. Because you got to bring some stuff to the land. And I'm like, I'm not about to put extra stuff in my luggage. Like, I already got extra stuff because I'm bringing stuff for my friends. I'm not bringing anything for you. And the way that you just did that, I probably would have brought something for them if they would have asked nicely. Instead of just thinking that they was going to tell me. Like, that was the whole problem with them. It was like a whole power, power trip with them. Like, they were all very narcissistic. But I ended up leaving them in Atlanta because it was just like I was about to end up fighting all of the leaders and it just I was not a good they didn't want me around the other brainwashed people because I was rebelling so I pretty much got kicked out I left got kicked out whatever and yeah that's my story about how I grew up in a cult I'm about to get into these crab legs. Like, <clears throat> I'm about to really get into it. <clears throat> and I need my privacy so I can eat the way I want to eat. So I can eat the way I do in front of my man. Ooh. All right, y'all. It's been real. If y'all like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Comment. If y'all know about the African Hebrew Israelites, comment, like, subscribe. Definitely be subscribed. Definitely like the video. But yeah, let me get up out of here. I'm trying to get into it. My nose running. Ooh, this sauce is hot, girl. Be love. Ooh, wee. But y'all be easy. Peace.